Well, praise God, man. I got plenty of time to preach this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, a lot of times whenever I hit the full fit, it's about 20 minutes till. I mean, but hey, it's, 10, it's just 20 minutes after today. I got some extra time to preach. Amen. Y'all don't be in no hurry now. That's a, uh, hey, I get a little bit of extra. I get a little bit of extra time to preach, and then Nancy messes it all up by reminding me that the fried chicken's waiting. Boy, isn't that something? All right, if you will take your Bibles and turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter number twenty-two. I know that usually during this time of year you hear the Christmas story, but I've been preaching the Christmas story to you for the last several times that we've gotten together and you know part of the Christmas story is what we're going to be doing today uh, and I want to talk about what we're going to do today for just a little bit before we get into what it's all about uh, we we're, we're going to be taking the ordinance of what we call the Lord's Supper uh, in the, after the service this morning uh, and uh, I just want to remind you that, yes, Jesus was born. Uh, Jesus grew up and made a wonderful man and uh, preached the gospel for some three, three and a half years, then died on an old, rugged, cruel cross, was buried in a borrowed tomb, but praise God, he didn't stay there. Amen. Just before he died, he gathered up his disciples and he basically said this to them. Notice, if you will, beginning with verse number 7 of Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. The Bible says, Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. Praise God that we may eat. Amen. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? And Jesus said unto them, Behold, when ye enter into the city, there shall be a man meet you, bearing a pitch of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in, and ye shall say unto the good man of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he'll show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him, and he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and brake it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for what this service means. And as we look at it for just a moment, I pray your blessings upon all that we'll learn today. In Jesus' name, amen. This time of year, shopping malls are busy. Uh, we made a trip last evening after we went through the funeral service that we had yesterday. We went down to Swanee and uh, we saw the beautiful Christmas lights there. And 
And while we were traveling, the roadways were full of people. So people are traveling, trying to get to their destinations to, to be with family and to spend time with family. But many of the shopping malls are full. People try to buy that last minute gift. Uh, there is a store in some of those shopping malls that's called Things Remembered. Things Remembered. I don't know so much that we have them in our area, but there is a store called Things Remembered. And so today I want to bring to you a, a message that, that I've titled A Call to Remember. A Call to Remember. Now, these stores call things remembered. Usually they offer items that's been engraved. Uh, I have some of these such items uh, after having been in the ministry for over 30, 35 years, uh, there's always those individuals in those churches that have presented to me plaques or, or, or some type of engraved, uh, uh, I call them whatnots, all right? Is that okay? Uh, and, and so I have some of these things. If you go into my office, I have one that this church presented to me uh, in 1989, uh, and it's on the wall. And, and these things basically were given by individuals who wanted me to remember. And there's nothing wrong with, with remembering. You see, many people give engraved items in honor of a special day or a shared moment. Now, if you've received such a gift... You know exactly what I'm talking about because usually you treasure these gifts. My wife's got a beautiful apple that was printed, presented to her. In fact, I think it's a golden apple because she... Oh, is it a crystal? But it's got a golden top on it. Yes. She's got that because she was chosen by her peers one year to be the teacher of the year at her school. And that means something to her. Uh, it means a lot to her because her peers thought enough of her to vote for her to be the teacher of the year in the school that she at that time was teaching in. And I'm sure that all of you, you've, you've received the gifts sometimes for service received. I've got a little golden pen. I remember whenever I had finished five years of service with Tiff Regional Medical Center. I've got a little golden pen that says I spent five years of my life working for them. Mr. Junior, you probably got uh, some paraphernalia that you received from Harvey's Supermarket for a job well done. You spent how many years with them? Uh, 20 years. 20 years, okay. So you see, I mean, we've all got those gifts that mean so much to me. People like to remember happy times. Amen? We like to remember happy times. Now, memories are precious. It is memories many times that keeps us connected to people, that keeps us connected to places and events that have shaped us and influenced our lives. One of the most precious gifts that I ever received was the gift of my ordination into the ministry. And I have that framed. And, and I'll always keep that until I die. Because it was a special time in my life that, that God uh, and men uh, saw the gifting of God in my life when I surrendered uh, uh, to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, at the Last Supper, Jesus shared a meal with his disciples, and he led them in the ancient uh, observance of, of what is called the Feast of, of Unleavened Bread, or Passover. Now, Jesus, the master teacher, used this particular time 
to plant an important memory in his disciples that had gathered with him in that upper room. Now, memories are important. And so Jesus was one who knew exactly what to do to take those memories and use them for a teaching moment. Now, Jesus shared this meal for their benefit and for our benefit. As Jesus raised the bread and the cup in thanksgiving, he added new significance to an ancient ritual. Luke 22 records the fact that Jesus told his disciples that they were to observe this Passover. And Passover is something that is observed by Orthodox Jews unto this very day. But Jesus added something to the Passover. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. We're living in a time when it would seem that people want to forget about him. Amen. But bless God, he said, do this in remembrance of me. That might be why we find ourselves in the condition that we're in today because we're trying to forget about him. I remember when we used to put up what we call Christmas trees. Now the media calls them holiday trees. I remember when we used to celebrate Merry Christmas. Now you walk into a store a lot of times, but bless God, I've heard it more this year than in past years. I've heard Merry Christmas again. Hallelujah. But many times you walk in stores and you hear happy holidays. And usually when somebody says that to me, I said a Merry Christmas to you too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Jesus took an old symbol, the Passover, and he filled it with new meaning. Now, the meaning of Jesus' words and actions is rooted in his command, do this in remembrance of me. Now, today's disciples observe what we call the Lord's Supper. We're going to do that in just a few moments. We're going to observe the Lord's Supper. And when we do, we're going to do it in remembrance of Christ. Now that word remembrance means that we're going to go all the way back to this time. We remember when he was a baby in Bethlehem. We remember that. We remember when he was just a boy of 12 and actually taught the religious leaders and they were amazed at what he could say. Then we remember how that he was baptized by John the Baptist. We remember that dove representing the Holy Ghost <laughs> falling from heaven and saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We remember his messages and his healing of the sick and his opening of blinded eyes and causing the deaf people to hear and even raising the dead. We remember. But we remember that he went through a beating and abuse that should have been ours. We remember. We remember that they hang him suspended between heaven and earth and he died a cruel death that should have been ours. We remember. We remember him taking him off the cross, having to prepare his body real quickly because it was the time of the Passover, and laying him in a borrowed tomb, sealing the door shut. We remember the piety of the religious leaders who said, he said that he had rise again. So seal the tomb 
and place your guards there. We remember. We remember the stone being rolled away. And those disciples running in and seeing that he's not there anymore. We remember it. Now listen to me. I want you to understand this. When I tell you that we remember, the stone was rolled away, but it wasn't rolled away so that he could get out. It was rolled away so that we could get in and see that he had gotten out. Hallelujah. We remember. We remember that he walked among his brethren 40 days after he resurrected. We remember. We remember that he ascended and is sitting at the right hand of God, ever making intercession for you and I. We remember. Yes, we do. And praise God, we need to remember all that Christ accomplished. There are three things I want to share with you real quickly. Number one, let's look at the historical significance of this moment. You see, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is the historical background for the establishment of the Lord's Supper. And you can read about that in Exodus chapter 12. We don't have time to go back and to to teach the importance of this, but it represents the final chapter of, of God's miraculous rescue of Israel from slavery in Egypt, the plague of judgment upon the firstborn of the Egyptians. For the angel of death would pass over the household of a family who had put the blood of the sacrificial lamb on their doorframe of their house. My friend, that spirit of death would pass them by. We're living in a time, listen, whenever they're trying to take the blood out of it. But it's still a fact that blood cleanses sin. Pure, perfect Christ blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So this pastoral lamb is a good Old Testament picture of Jesus on the cross of Calvary shedding his blood for our sins. That is the historical setting. Secondly, let's look at the redemptive significance in this. We should remember that the Lord's Supper is redemptive in its significance. When John the Baptist saw Jesus approaching, he said this, and he cried out with a loud voice. Listen, it's all right for Baptists to shout every now and then because John was a Baptist and he cried out, listen, with a loud voice. He said, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You see, John clearly establishes the reason for the Lord's coming. He comes as a fulfillment of what the Passover lamb had foreshadowed. In Exodus chapter 12, the lamb was sacrificed for the deliverance of a family. Jesus was sacrificed on the cross of Calvary for the deliverance of his soul. Amen. Amen. But I'm glad he died for me. I'm glad he loved me that much. The Passover lamb sub uh, provided it was just a substitute for the firstborn of Israel. Do you realize that? Jesus was a substitute for you. He took your place on Calvary. Now without the death of the Lamb and the spreading of its blood, my friend, they would have faced the judgment of God and the death of their firstborn. But because the sacrifice
sacrificial lamb died and they took his blood and they put it over the doorpost. Friend, their firstborn was spared and saved. Oh, praise God, because Jesus died on the cross of Calvary and you've been washed in his blood and you placed the blood of the Lamb of God without spot or blemish over the doorpost of your heart, you can shout, glory to God, I'm saved. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed without the shedding of blood. Without the shedding of blood, the Lord Jesus Christ, his substitutionary death, you and I would have no hope of salvation. Number three, this should have a personal significance to us. This should have a personal significance to us. What we're about to do should have a personal significance. We should remember the Lord's Supper has a significance. Jesus said, this is my body given for you. The cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. Jesus takes this Old Testament Passover service. He personalizes his statement in all of this. And I like what he uses here. He uses a personal pronoun. What is the personal pronoun? This you do in remembrance of me. This is my blood that was poured out for you. This bread is my body that was broken for you. You could take the word you out right there and write your name there. Listen. This is my body that was given for daddy. <laughs> you ever thought about how personal that is? A personal pronoun. This is my body that was given for you. This is my body that was given for me. This is my body that was given for Steve. This is my body that was given for Gwen. This is my God. This is my body that was given for, for Vera. And we could just go right on around the room. He even gave his body for you, creature. This is my body that was given for Steve. And the list could just go on and on and on. Until we went around the entire room. Jesus was telling his disciples. Listen, I'm going to suffer for you. I'm going to die for you. And what Jesus was saying is, I'm going to die for every one of you. I'm glad. That he died for me. And because he died for me, he loved me enough to die for me. Why in the world can't I be willing to live for him? Now you stop with me for just a moment. And you think with me. What do we allow to get in our way of living for him when he was willing to give up his life to die for me? Why can't I just live for him? That's all he wants us to do. Oh, in just a few hours, everybody will be all excited and be under those trees, ripping open those presents that's under the tree and looking at all of the presents and 
Oh, we'll be telling everybody uh, after first of the year, somebody will say, well, what'd you get for Christmas? You see, the greatest gift that anybody could ever receive for Christmas is Jesus. Amen. Jesus. And the greatest gift that anyone could ever give Jesus at Christmas is yourself. It's all he wants is you. Stand with me, heads bowed, eyes closed. Listen. Steve, we're not going to sing a hymn of invitation. Nancy's going to come to the piano and she's just going to play real softly. Real softly. You know without a shadow of a doubt that you've allowed something to get in the way. You've not given Jesus your very best. I want to invite you just to step out. Come to an altar of prayer. Good time to make it right this morning. To do business with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I will be the first to stand at this altar and say, Lord, I failed you miserably. Oh, God, thank you for a new start. God, I just want to surrender my all to you. Are there others? Are there others who's willing to give? Master his greatest desire. I've been doing this for a long time. A lot of times, whenever you take the Lord's Supper, the end of the message, you just uncover the table, take the Lord's Supper, but the Lord led my heart to give us a time just to do business with the King. If a minute comes this morning desiring to come home, <laughs> If you want to come home to Gordon Avenue Baptist Church, do I hear a motion to receive her? Do I hear it? All in favor say glory to God. Glory to God. I believe you will. Listen, let's get up from this side, come by and shake your hand, and then go back to your seat, and we'll take the Lord's Supper, okay? This side first, and then this side to follow.